Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad in the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is about the regex regular expressions capturing group introduction. I'm going to open up my web browser on my website javacjava.com, click on my little expand out menu here and select regex tutorials. I must select the uh, regex capturing groups introduction. Now capturing groups are built by enclosing regular expressions inside of a pair of parentheses. A simple example of a capturing group would be a regex string literal enclosed in parentheses like this, right? Display basically this is the string literal lizard and then we just enclose that in parentheses. Now on the surface regex capturing groups appear to be very similar to plain old regex string literals. And the example above would actually be functionally identical. Now, when capturing groups are used in complicated expressions, such as, you know, this, this guy right here, right, which is used to validate a, whether, see whether an out, uh, IP address is valid there, right, they not only make the expression more readable, but they group regular expressions into things known as tokens. Okay, so you can see we have a capturing group on this particular one that goes from like there to there. Right, and then we have another capturing group up here, and um, then another capturing group on here, on this particular one here, okay? Now many operations can be performed on capturing groups. Capturing groups are automatically numbered, so they can be assigned a name or an alias, they can be, uh, and they can be used as back references. Now this tutorial, and don't worry about this name, alias, automatically numbered back references. So this tutorial, tutorial will not discuss the topics of capturing group numbering, naming, or back referencing. Now the purpose of this tutorial is to simply demonstrate a basic usage of capturing groups so that I can introduce you to quantifiers in my next tutorial. Once I've discussed quantifiers and some other stuff, I'll return to the topics of capturing group numbering, naming, and back referencing so I can demonstrate more meaningful usage examples. Now this tutorial builds on concepts from my other regex tutorials, so I highly recommend watching them all before continuing. All right, let's go ahead and come down here to the source code here and highlight this. Hit Control C to copy or right click and select copy. I'm gonna move my browser off screen and I've got a shortcut to the command prompt on my desktop. If you don't, you can create one really fast by right clicking, selecting new shortcut. CMD next and finish. That's all there is to it. Let's go ahead and open that up. If you're new to my tutorials, type in Java C, which is a Java compiler command. Um, you should see all this stuff scroll by. However, if you receive an error message, watch my tutorial and installing the Java development kit. You want to make sure you get that installed and configured properly before continuing. CLS to clear the screen, CD space backslash, CD short for change directory, backslash tells it to go to the root. I'll make a directory using the MD command called Java right off of the root. And I already have that folder, but if you don't, I'll go ahead and create one for you. I'll make another directory here. I'm going to call this um, regex group intro. Okay, change directories to that folder. And then I'm going to notepad regex group intro.java. Okay, and then we'll hit control V to paste all that stuff in there. Let's go up here and save this. So I'm importing the Java Util regex package there. Single class regex group intro. Uh, main method entry point right here. And then of course, if you've been watching my other tutorials, you're already familiar with the display find method there, okay? Now one thing I did here is in the, in the first tutorials there, I went ahead and you know created a pattern object, right? Using the pattern compile method. And of course, passing in the regular expression that we want to compile there. In there, we also pass in the search me, which is the uh, basically the search expression there. And by invoking the matcher method off of the pattern object that we have, we can create a, a matcher object. Okay, we can also do this in a single line, and you may see this out there on the on the web or in somebody else's code or something like that, where you have this there. But I split this apart into two things there. So if you ever do see this, you know, it, it eliminates some of the confusion on how you actually get your matcher object. But for this tutorial, we'll just go ahead and use like kind of this chain together one here, right? Method on top of method there, okay? All right, um, let's go ahead and just come right up here and dive right into this. Let's save this, let's clear our screen. Java C to compile it, Java to run it. And we'll go statement by statement. Let's scroll all the way back up here. All right, so our first statement up here, um, our regular expression enclosed in our uh, capture group here, 
is is just the string, basically the string literal lizard there, right? And then next to the capturing group, I have a character class here with S or Z, and then we're checking this string literal here, this Java string literal, not a, over here I'm talking a regex string literal, right? But this Java string literal here, should I name my new pet store Happy Lizards or Happy Lizards? One with an S or one with a Z, you know, just being a little creative on that stuff there. So if we, um, our regular expression is, is the capturing group lizard. And then after that, we have, you know, the character class S or Z. Basically what this is saying is we have to find the string literal and, right, and right there, we have to find either an S or a Z, right? And if that happens, then, then that'll match back. So what we get up here is matcher found lizards with an S at index 37 for that, of course, that regular expression and in that string literal. And then matcher also found lizards with a Z at index 54 for that same regular expression, okay? So that's kind of how that works. Now you'll notice in this, um, this next one here, with the same regex expression on this string literal is a snake, a lizard. You'll notice that, you know, lizard here, right? We have a question mark following the D in lizard. So this, this uh, capture group right here says we have to have lizard and then and either an S or Z. Since we don't have that, it's gonna come back with no match is found for lizard for that regular expression and is a snake a lizard, okay? So it's fairly simple on all that, how that works there. Now demonstrating we can do kind of you know, the same, we have a capture group here, but we don't here. This is just a string literal with the same thing. Should I, and, and we're gonna get basically, of course, the same exact result, not putting that into a capture group, okay? But now keep in mind, it's, uh, it's, it's a good idea to kind of get in the habit of using capturing groups instead of just doing something like that. Because um, as you'll learn in my next few tutorials, um, you can do a lot of cool stuff with capturing groups and in future tutorials there too as well. Um, when I go into capturing group numbering and naming and back referencing it, it really kind of really you can really do some really neat stuff there So get far more advanced than just the basic stuff here. Okay Now I'm going to scroll up on this here and Then in the next one here, I'm going to introduce the or right? We already know the or from the Java programming language similar Fortunately, it's the exact same thing, right? And of course, this is the non short circuiting version of or right so and that doesn't mean anything in the or for the regular expression language there, right? But basically, this up here, we can do the exact same thing down here, right? Um, this capturing group or this capturing group, right? And that'll, that'll basically return back the exact same thing as you can see right up here. Lizards with an S or lizards with a Z in two different capturing groups, okay? We can also do something like, for example, um, capturing group lizard, right? And then followed by just a single character, right? Literal there, it's character literal. We've got string literal, character literal, right? And basically, this will be capturing group, it'll produce the same result. Lizard capturing group with either an S or a Z, right? And that will produce the same result right there. Find the same pattern there. Um, you know, we can also put um, regular expressions inside of capturing groups right here, right? Like we've got the, the string literal lizard and then of course the character in, inside of the um, a character class right here, right? And, or we can check for the S or the Z, right? That'll return back the exact same results on the search pattern on that too as well. Okay, so um, then you can even enclose, of course, your groups inside of groups. So we got this group right enclosed uh, this group in a capture group right here right and then of course a character class right after that all enclosed in a whole nother capturing group right there right okay so and this isn't really meant to um, you know be anything productive or anything better I'm just demonstrating how you what you can do with all this there right as opposed to like just a you know a single string literal inside of here, you know you can put a whole entire enclosed all sorts of regular expressions inside of capturing groups there. So, all right, and then the um, the last one here, right? So we could do um, you know this capturing group, um, this character class, of course the pipe symbol, the or or my there, right? And that'll that'll come back and it'll say, okay, I found my at index fourteen, right? for that regular expression. Found lizards with an S at 
index 37, found lizards with a Z at index 54. Okay, so all in all, fairly simple. Um, capturing groups, of course, you know, they're, they're very much like, you know, um, the way parentheses work for like in mathematical functions in Java and, you know, for loops and stuff like that too and you know, all kinds of stuff there. So um, that pretty much concludes it for this tutorial. Pretty simple, straightforward. I will go into a little more things that we can do with these later on there. But I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that, get rid of that. I don't really have any final thoughts for this, but we'll uh, stay tuned for my next tutorial uh, where I talk about quantifiers. Thanks for watching.